Hi everyone, welcome back to Brain More Business Hub channel. Today in this uh, studio, I'm joined by Dr. Charity. Dr. Charity is a well of introduction. She is um, an HR expert and an entrepreneur as well as a director of uh, many organizations. So one of the key organizations that I'm thinking of that she's running is Rotec. In a motor industry, they do various kind of stuff. But most importantly, to, today she's going to explore her experts in HR. You know, we're going to have um, a discussion and a talk around HR contracting employees. Yeah, welcome to Brain More Business Up channel. Uh, thank Dr. you Chet. very much, uh, Molly. It's a pleasure to be here. I've uh, I follow your channel. I love it. Yeah. And so it's a pleasure and an honor to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. So, you know, uh, contracting is uh, like employee contracts is not something that organization can can actually, you know, um, um, get out of you know, because they need help with, uh, with, 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 the, with the, the skills that the employee bring in. Mm -hmm. But however, there's also a, a side to it around CCMA, when things don't go right within the contracting, you know, the fights that happen within the organization between the employers and the employees. Mm -hmm. So my first question, okay, there's CCMA. What is CCMA to start with? Okay, so basically the CCMA yeah. is the Commission for Conciliation, Mediation and Arbitration. Their purpose is um, to mediate between parties. Yeah. But, uh, the, where there's a conflict to try and bring resolution. Okay. To also record the statistics for the CCMA. This is among other things that they also do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, of, okay. So I'm thinking this organization was formed after seeing that, or not necessarily after, but because where there are two parties, they are bound to be um, uh, issues. If I can call it that way. So there should be someone who is independent out there mm -hmm. that mediate between the employer and employees in this case. Yes, so it becomes like a tripartite arrangement where the yeah. employer is a platform for the employer, the employee, and um, a, a government, sort of like a representative of the okay. government body. So it's a platform where they can actually discuss the three of them, any issues that pertain to them. Okay. Yes to the contracting between those two two parties. Okay, so I think um, from my understanding, there are a lot of misconceptions around CCMA, what it stands for mm -hmm. and what they are there for. Mm -hmm. Because you see, um, let's say an employee maybe sometime maybe decide not to come to work and we'll say then they can be fired and they'll say, no, I'm going to go to CCMA. So mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of misconceptions around there. Can you take us through maybe what are the some of the misconceptions? Uh, in terms of misconceptions, I think one of the misconceptions yeah. uh, that are there mm. is that um, you can just take anything there. Yeah. But it's actually a, a proper legal uh, f uh, platform yeah. where uh, a person needs, eventually, mm. they need to bring evidence and, and okay. so forth. So it's actually a legal platform okay. for, for conflict resolution. So you just can't take any case. Any case. Uh, there's also a misconception that it's, um, it's easy. Okay. And it's, uh, and it's and it's fair. Yeah. Um. But um. Generally, because the employer is the stronger party. Okay. In the employment relationship. Yeah. The CCMA tends to to be um to be it appears more biased okay. to the employee. Mm. Because the the employer is obviously stronger. They're stronger in terms of financial resources. Yeah. They were the usually they are the deciding party. Yeah. When the case is taken there, you find that the the it, the employers end up set, settling. So it's actually a study shows that about eighty percent mm. of employees they end up uh, just of employers rather mm. they end up just settling because of the 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 way the the process the process the process, um, mm. process takes. Yeah, because now mm. as an employer, you have a lot of things to take care of. And if the cases are thrown in to, to, to CCMA, you cannot really um, afford time to mm. sit in there and, and, you know. But one thing that you pointed out rightly is to say, maybe the misconception is, is, is I can take anything there. Mm. But that's not the case. That is not the case. Because there are some cases that can be thrown away that say, no, you were at a wrong from the employee well, perspective. Well, remember the first stage is um, 
for of the is to conciliate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, well, maybe we'll talk about the stages a bit later. So yeah. they will give you a platform still to 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 go through your yeah uh, through your issues, um, mm. present evidence where evidence is there. Mm. Uh, but um, definitely, it's not it's not going to be a walk in the park if there is no case on okay. the part of the employee. Okay. Uh, you referred to time, and I think also time is another misconception that people have. Yeah. That it's easy and it's going to be fast. Yeah. It's a legal process, so it will also take all the stages. Okay. Evidence will be presented. Mm. Witnesses will be called if there is need for it. Yeah. So it will actually take time. Mm-hmm. So that is why uh, that eighty percent of the employers end up settling not because they're guilty, yeah. but because it's time consuming. The mm. entrepreneur, when they look at this whole case, it's mm. a lot of wasted time that could they could be using to develop their business. Yeah. While also it's it's also a very long process. Yeah. So it can also frustrate even the person person who actually brought, brought in the, the case, case. Yeah. yeah because they um end up running out of money yeah they end up also it can be very frustrating because when they bring it especially if 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 they were genuine in bringing the case yeah they really believe that maybe they'll get their money quickly they yeah. get some kind of um um response quickly mm-hmm. but then it takes a, a, a while mm. so there the advice would obviously be it's if you can mm. settle it while Mm. before you, you get take to it. this tripartite oh. forum. Ah. Settle between the two of you while you are alone yeah. at your work environment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it's, 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 it's very important to, if, if, to, to talk through things within organizations yes, before is. people run to CCMA. And as you are saying, it's a process on its mm. own. It's, indeed, it's a legal uh, process it's where they legal. cannot wake up and say no. Yeah, it is, yes. and, and in favor of, and something like that. Thank you for that. Uh, Dr. Charity, you've been involved in the um, HR space, and obviously as an HR expert within the organization, you've seen a lot of cases mm-hmm. um, that maybe employees take to CSMA. Can you share the common cases that you've encountered around? Yeah, I think yeah. Um, in my experience, it has been mostly wrongful termination. Okay. Um, while the CCMA allows you a, 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 a presently employed uh, person to also take issues to the CCMA, mm. let's say there's a warning mm. uh, that they've been issued with that they're not happy with, mm-hmm. or they suspect that they are in the path of maybe constructive dismissal, yeah. they can actually challenge certain warnings and, and so forth. They can actually bring those issues to the CCMA. Yeah. But those ca- cases are actually fewer. Okay. Um, fewer than the wrongful terminations and you know terminations come from misconduct so Mm. they're disputing the outcome of a disciplinary uh, hearing Mm. uh, possibly the retrenchment process or Mm. the the actual selection how people were actually selected okay um, and um, uh, maybe incapacity Mm. Uh, maybe they were terminated after some illness or performance Mm. issues yeah yeah Okay. So those are the majority of the cases uh, that go to the CCMA for mm. wrongful termination, in my experience. Okay, so wrongful termination, which means it's either the organization didn't follow the rightful process or they, they, they employee think that the organization didn't follow the rightful process. Correct. So in that it's regard, a, yeah, okay, you can go ahead. Um, yes, that, that's correct. So when the matter is actually taken to, this, to the CCMA, yeah. there are actually two key elements that they look at. Yeah. They look at uh, what they call procedural fairness. Okay. And they look at what they call substantive fairness. Okay. So when they um, they look at procedural fairness, I have a, an acronym that I use, it's true law. Okay. Where one, have you given the employee enough time? Okay. To prepare for this hearing. Mm-hmm. Uh, R is for representation. Have they been allowed to seek the representation that they want? So it okay. can be from a colleague or from a union. Okay. Uh, at that point in in the organization, legal like lawyers are not really part of the leak the representation. Well, okay. they can consult them outside, mm. but in during the process, only a colleague and a union member can represent them. Okay. And then uh, you have understanding. You have to check. Uh, did that person really understand? Okay. So that is where we encourage employers to to ask them in, in to to put the charges forward and ask them to. To respond okay. in terms of statement, this is this is also evidence that you can then sh- share as an entrepreneur or as an employer mm. to 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 the commissioner okay. that um, or to the commission that you 
the employer actually really understood okay. what they were to, what you were talking about yeah so after that we've gotten um an i mm -hmm. and i means independent mm -hmm. so the independent is um when you're talking about the chairperson, and the people who are mm. putting this, uh, who is hearing this matter, yeah. they must be independent. Mm -hmm. They must not be involved in that case. Yeah. They must not be either the manager responsible. Mm. So in the case of entrepreneurs, yeah. they are usually very small organizations. Yes. So they can actually then take the matter outside. By that I mean they can invite an, inter, an, an independent um, person okay. to hear the matter. Oh. So this can be a qualified uh, practitioner okay. or or a, a director from another company. Okay. As long as they're independent and they're not involved in any way in the, the within the organization, oh. not necessarily within the organization mm. in that matter. Oh. So if okay. your organization is a bit bigger, you can then take another manager from okay. another department. Okay. But however, most entrepreneurs, they're the manager, they're the mm. accountant, they're the they're mm. playing all the roles. Yes. They're the sales manager in everything. Mm. So that means take it outside to somebody else who mm. is not a part or involved in that okay. particular dispute. Okay. So that would be about independence. Mm. Then we've got the L. The L is for language. Mm. Uh, because we're dealing with all sorts of uh, levels of employees, okay. um, you want that person to be to be sure, it's yeah. also part of the understanding. Okay. But it's, it's slightly different in that it's also about language, just okay. language. Where, were they able to express themselves okay. the best way they could, mm. defend themselves the best way they could, mm. express themselves in the best way. Okay. So that, um, that evidence can be shown where in the recorded minutes of the hearing, okay. that question is actually asked. Okay. What language do you prefer to communicate with? Okay. Do you want someone to interpret anything for you? Oh, and okay. so forth. So after L, we've got an O, O W, which is the mm. outcome of that uh, of that um, of that hearing mm. or that um, yeah that disciplinary process. Mm. It should be in writing. So oh. it's the a written outcome. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that is the way you would you when you're evaluating is it procedurally fair? Oh, so that okay. is a small acronym that you can use for yourself and say okay yeah okay if you tick uh, the the everything the boxes mm. then it's um, okay. Procedurally fair. fair. All right. So you said the acronym again. Uh, acronym it's, again, it's, so that our listeners who are watching this can take take down that and make right. sure. It's T. Yeah. T is for time. Yeah. So there we say it's a minimum of forty eight hours to okay. prepare them to allow them to come for the hearing. Okay. Uh, we said R. Mm -hmm. R is for representation. Okay. So they're allowed by the colleague and by the mm. uh, by a union member if they're yeah. part of the union. Mm -hmm. U is for understanding. Yeah. Did they understand? So that's where we're asking them to write statements to yes. respond to the challenges mm. or the allegations at that time. Yeah. And then we've got I. I is for independent. Okay. And I think we spoke in detail about independence. Yeah. And then L is for language. And O W is for the outcome, which it should be in right. writing. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's it's very critical because many times I know, especially for smaller businesses, you don't have time, so you end up maybe messing around the fairness around um, the the termination mm -hmm. or how you do it, and it end up costing you. Mm -hmm. I know there is some budgets that you need to do if you don't do things. Right, for, correct, because now you correct. need to hire a lawyer. Maybe yeah. if the case is is, is is going to arbitration, mm. then you you need the time that you spend. Like what you're saying, that the process takes mm. so much time. Yeah, and so, also yeah. I think uh, just another element is that yeah. we said procedural fairness. Where yeah. that acronym applies. Yeah, and then we've got the substantive fairness. Okay. So now, before we even look at the merits of the case. Okay. This is now, uh, we, we look at that process. Okay. So we're looking at how did we do it? Yeah. Now we're looking at why did we do it? Oh. Or why did this dispute arise? Okay. What happened? The okay. details, the reasons. Okay. Now you're looking at the reasons why um, that person is in a dispute. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that can also be, that's where you also assess in terms of fairness. Okay. This is where you actually check was, uh, was, um, was it uh, was it really an offense with okay. the, the, the actual proper evaluation? Ah, okay. Um, uh, Chirit, you spoke about two critical things, which is procedural tests mm -hmm. and substantive tests mm -hmm. around looking at the fairness mm -hmm. of the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those are the two critical things that I've just picked up that you have s said, yeah. 
Yes. So about substantive, now you're looking at why. You're not yeah. looking at the reason. Mm-hmm. Why are we here? What yeah. brought this person here? Okay. So this is where you're looking at what was the cause of it. So it was it retrenchment? Yeah. So was the retrenchment process followed? Did you evaluate that? Yeah. Uh, was it um, misconduct? Mm. Uh, and what was the misconduct? Was it incapacity? Mm. Was it performance issues? And yeah. so forth. So this is now where you actually just look at the reason why. Mm. You, you just look at the merits of the case. Okay. That's okay. Is there evidence? Okay. Now that's where the employer or the entrepreneur is actually being asked, where is the evidence that this person mm. committed, uh, really committed a misconduct? Yeah. Mm. What is the evidence? And then they are supposed to lead with the evidence that, okay, this is, this is what happened. Yeah. They misappropriated funds. This is the evidence that they mm. misappropriated. They were supposed to record like this, mm. but they didn't. And mm. then this money was found missing, yeah. and they took it. And look at their statement. This is what they state in their statement that, ah, um, um, I, I just taken the money. I didn't know it was, um, mm. it was n- not, um, it would be counted. Maybe it, I didn't know that there would be a spot check on it. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. So mm. this is generally an example. But mm. now you're actually looking at the merit of the case and looking at the evidence mm. where the em- uh, entrepreneur is supposed to submit evidence. Okay. So from what I'm picking here, for something to be, t- for you to have a case, you really need to do your records, uh, make sure that you uh, record everything. Because you, if you don't have like, um, I know at some point in Zim, they talk about V11. If you don't have V11 or evidence, to prove that what you're saying, the case, you might not necessarily have a case. So, which is very important, especially to to business owners to yes. say, maybe make sure you record if you have a, a case that, that, that happened, put it into writing via an email or something like that, so that at least all, everything is um, um, written. Records are always there, Molly. Mm. And in the world that we're living in, records are really everywhere. Yeah. Your Instagram, your email, your WhatsApp, Mm. Um, your emails, everything, letters, mm. everything that we write. Um, we should make sure that as we write them, mm. we know that they're business communication. Okay. And one day, possibly, maybe, mm. you're lucky, maybe not, mm. but you might appear with those documents in front of um, a judge or a commissioner or an arbitrator okay. with those documents. So mm. all communication that we do with our employees are business communication Communication. and they must be done properly recorded correctly Mm. so this also brings the the issue of where sometimes for the entrepreneur Mm. the 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 first people that you actually employ are related to you yeah um are connected to you Mm. through friends through family maybe they're just from your network yeah so you you might be having another relationship over the employer and employee relationship yeah but remember when there is a dispute all other relationships go mm. away and you're before the commission. The commission only looks at the employment really? relationship. Yeah. The fact that you said, ah, my friend, I will yeah. not pay you. Yeah. The imp- the commissioner will look at this person and say, you are calling this friend, my friend, I'm not going to pay you. Mm. But if they're your employee, pay them. Yeah. You understand? Mm. So everything must be done correctly. Mm. Um, and the records must all be in place. Okay. And... Regardless of any other extenuating relationships or mm. circumstances, mm. the relationship between you and your employee must always be formally an employment relationship. Wow, yeah. wow. So I think I like what you are saying because uh, with this, with the availability of uh, various modes of communication, sometimes we, we tend to think to take things casual. Mm. It's quick WhatsApp, mm-hmm. but you are saying that's a business communication. Yes. Uh, and it's very important to know that the relationship that is there, it's a business communication. Mm-hmm. Business and you need to know that this communication is appropriate and the, the, the things that you are talking about there, oh, we, one day, you know, you can stand before the court and answer mm-hmm. to that. And when it's written, unfortunately, you cannot ex- escape yeah. on it. Yeah. So tell me, how can organization make the employees aware of their rights and what is CCMA around CCMA? How, what, what is the role of companies okay. to their employees around making them aware of their rights to right. employment rights? Yeah. So the, the, the CCMA is, um, 
is uh, established under the, the the Labor Act in South Africa, which yeah. is the Basic Conditions of Employment Act. Mm. So that is where um, the act that gives the employee certain rights. Okay. So I think the first thing that we should do mm. and that we are required to do as entrepreneurs and as employees to display mm. the acts, the summarized acts. So these are available okay. uh, for purchase. Mm. Um, and you're supposed to display them in a public area where the employees can see them. Okay. So that evidence can be required at a future state that uh, where they are away, you can be asked by the commissioner in mm. where they are away. So that would be one evidence that you can bring for that yes. Mm. Uh, right where they take their meal or right where our notice board, this is where we display the, mm. the, the labor laws, yeah. the act. So mm. they were aware of this procedure. They were aware of this, uh, these rights. Mm. Then uh, your your company documents. Mm. These start from when the com- the employee mm. walks into your company. Yeah. Or maybe maybe even maybe prior before a particular employee starts. Yeah. You've got your company policies. Yeah. Um, you've got the um, employment contracts yes. themselves. You've got uh, handbooks and policy documents. Mm. So these also. Um, uh, are, are evidence at a later stage if required yeah. that okay the employee was away mm-hmm. but then it becomes important to say was this particular employee aware mm. of that so that's why certain uh, employee handbooks when or as part of your when you give your employee mm. handbook the employee can acknowledge the receipt of that handbook okay and that's why also even on 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 documentation the employee can um, sign can sign off Mm. This is uh, this uh, will be primary evidence that okay they were away mm. they received it so they must be aware of it. Okay, yeah. So I think you are talking about something that is very important, like your documentation. They firstly you 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 say display the the act. It's actually a requirement that it's you, you a should display it so that at least the employees are aware mm. of the certain so certain regulations that they, they they protect the rights that they have within the contract mm. of employment. Then you are talking about the policies, you know, your induction. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you are inducting someone or getting someone in the organization, they need to understand mm-hmm. the policies. What does the 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 the, 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 the with evidence? Yeah. So it's okay. one thing to do it because yeah. a lot of times we do the right thing, but yeah. we don't record it. Okay. When we are required to bring the evidence, there's no evidence. Okay. Evidence of induction. Induction training, yeah, uh, proof of uh, induction training. Okay, mm-hmm. so okay. the training register, mm-hmm. and these are the mm-hmm. issues that we covered. Yeah, and so forth. Yeah. so that is why we record. That is how mm. um, we should also record. Okay, and mm-hmm. the policies or the handbook that we are handbook t- talking must about. Be signed that we have received it, or we have mm-hmm. actually taken them through the handbook. Okay, yeah. wow. No, that's very interesting. I I know many organization documentation is an issue. I'm an accountant of many, many companies and you see proper record keeping is something else. What more? But what is important that Dr. Charity is bringing is um, this is a contract. It's a legal agreement that has a potential of actually bringing your business down, down or even wasting your time. Yeah. Your concluding remark around employee contracting and what is the, your word of advice to the entrepreneurs that are watching this? So in conclusion, Molly, I think basically the employment contract is um, is also a business um, agreement. So it must be uh, put uh, in contract form. It, there must be a written agreement. Mm. Where there is no written agreement, this means uh, it is deemed to be a contract without end. And that usually does not work in your favor as the entrepreneur or as the employer. Mm. Um, we can also say that um, in everything that you do, record everything that you do, it might be evidence um, uh, in the future. And another important thing is that everything should be procedurally fair and substantively fair. Mm. Uh, Let's avoid uh, the emotions as entrepreneurs because everything is personal to the entrepreneur. So let's avoid those emotions, do everything by the book, follow it by the book and put everything in writing because you never know uh, what documents are going to be required before the, the CCMA itself. Okay, and, and also to the employees, just a bit. So I think uh, to employees, we could, um, we could conclu- conclude by saying, 
uh, the contract mm -hmm. is an important document for you individually. Yes. So you must take time to really read it, understand it, ask mm -hmm. questions where you need to. Mm -hmm. um, so this is not just applying to the employment contract. Mm -hmm. It's also applying um, to the, the handbook, if you have mm -hmm. been issued with a handbook, yeah. uh, to company policies. Mm -hmm. Um, especially the ones that you work around, even company mm. procedures, yeah. the ones that you work around, because they are the instructions and they're the guidelines to enable you and your employer to live in harmony or to work together in harmony yeah. and avoid disputes, mm. the disputes that you can eventually, that, that you can take through to, to the commission. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and also as much as possible, um, let good faith, I think this applies to, to both parties, mm. there must be good faith. So if something happens to you, approach, follow the, the dispute resolution process that is in your organization mm. um, positively with a good attitude to ensure that your issue is, is resolved. Yeah. So that way you avoid taking the matter elsewhere. Mm. It can be very, very frustrating. I think we've mentioned this for mm. the employer because right now, at that point, mm. your contract or your employment is terminated. Mm. That means your source, is a, a source of income is... is, is um, mm. It's closed no off. There, it's yeah. no longer there. Mm. So now, when you take the matter to the CCMA, it can um, it can take long for you. Your your resources are depleted. Mm. So the best way for you is to avoid the dispute at all. Yeah. But if the dispute happens, mm. resolve it amicably while mm. you're still within your organization. Yeah. That way, it 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 usually works out uh, better for, for for both parties. For all the parties. Yeah. Yes. So I think what is key there, from what I've picked up to our view is the agreement is an agreement you know it's very uh, important to understand the rights and the regulations around the, the this employment agreement to the employer you actually touched on something that is very important because sometimes things can become emotional you just pissed yes. off in the moment <laughs> and say, no 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 you're fired on the spot but really following the procedures through the emotion so you need to separate the business from your emotions because the business on its own has processes and procedures yes. that you need to to really uh, uh, take care of and to the employee know what is required yes. of you within the agreement and make sure you perform to the best of your ability and maybe try to just avoid that imagine your record is taking employers to CCMAs and something like that and also it can affect your other employment uh, uh, history something like that yes, so it's very important that is actually that. A, a, a complaint that is issued by a lot of people who take issues to the CCMA yeah that uh, their records are, are permanently tarnished mm. and now because of that strife that dispute that goes all the way to the CCMA yeah you find that the employer when they're asked to recommend they will give a lot of information that yeah. will make you totally unemployable. Yeah. Yeah. However, if you had resolved it amicably, mm. the strife is not too much. Yeah. Maybe the employer, uh, employer, while they might, they might still say mm. um, what they're required to say, but mm. they, it won't be a venomous um, mm. um, evaluation to such an extent that it, it, it affects your affects future, your future yeah. employment opportunities. Yeah. yeah. Okay, no, thank you. Thank you very much for that uh, discussion that we had, we, we just had. I hope to our viewers, you have benefited tremendous from this uh, conversation. If you're an employee, if you, you, you take out from this conversation, if you're an employer, a startup person, a business that is growing, um, you are trying to put your HR processes in place, this, there was everything for everyone. Hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and the notification button as well because we're going to have a, a part two of the same conversation with Dr. Charity. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.